Tonight we're playing um, a venue here in Oslo called Rockefeller. It's a legendary Norwegian uh, venue in the middle of Oslo. They're celebrating their 30th anniversary, and that's how this gig came about actually, because they saw that we were 25 years, and we've played it on, on quite a few occasions. It's got this sort of childish atmosphere around it from the bands, both outside Oslo, all the way around Norway. It's like when you go and you do the gig at Rockefeller, then your, your band is about to become like a grown-up band. It's, uh, it's, it's a great place to, to play and it, it's just, it just feels like maybe like the original rock venue uh, in Norway. When we started Enslaved, it wasn't like a super intellectual exercise. It was just like, what should the band be about? We, it needs to be personal. We were in, very influenced by the black metal bands, not in their satanic thing per se, but the way that they related to their concepts, the way that this was something they believed and lived 24, or was, at least was, that was the ideal. Um, <clears throat> we wanted that sort of closeness between the lyrics and the music. We came from homes where there were books on many different cultures, from, from you know African, Asian, uh, Native American, uh, Native Norwegian, and then this uh, Norse mythology, and that was something that caught both our eyes. Everything was so tied up in the conceptual world, you know, things were literal. So if you were a black metal band, that meant that at least the person in charge of whatever lyrics or something would have some, let's say, anything from a, a really strong interest in the occult or Satanism and upwards. I don't think too many people were actually Satanists. Um, some maybe thought they were, I don't know. For us it was a, a matter of respecting the bands that call themselves black metal and also our own fans to let them know like, from the get-go that, um, you know, we have goats but uh, the farm variant. We started, I guess like anyone would do, we started singing about the things we were reading. And then we, <clears throat> like literally, from fairy tales on, on Hold On This Land, trying to write sort of saga tales, fairy tales on our own, going into literal descriptions of the times, Viking Liga Valley, which is, I guess, our geographic album. It's, it's all about mountains, woods, and that kind of. Uh, thing and then st starting to delve into it from Frosteld, uh, so on interpreting certain mythological aspects, and then I would say around <coughs> Mardrum, uh, Monumentum, and especially Below the Lights. That's when we start to um, mix in, I guess, interpretations on a more, more of a more psychological uh, aspect. Uh, and then this whole Jungian idea of the archetypes and, and, and sort of the pre-installed um, deep uh, software in, in the brain which it can sort of be accessed through these systems uh, and sort of and going from there I think we've just expanded on it and seeing it as a part of something that's bigger than that again like, like a whole more like I guess Ritter was underlining that with setting it into a, a bigger context both in time and, and, and space and seeing this as more of a human endeavor, not so much as just a Nordic one. The essence of, of being progressive is for us linked into like the whole conceptual idea of uh, the philosophy found in, in you know in the old Norse beliefs and in, in mythology and in the runes. The tradition itself is actually about uh, exploration and progression. I think that's what uh, that's what they did, and that's I guess that's all, what all these monotheistic. Uh, systems are about. Learn to know thyself and then go, you know, onto the world and find weird stuff and have fun with it, sort of, to put it <laughs> not so, in a non-biblical way. It's monotheistic, monotheism, that's, 
that's about like tying down things and letting it be as it is and don't disturb and you know keep the, the power pyramid intact and all that but but for all these others it's so open for interpretation that it's it, for me it's it's clear that it's encouraging us to, to utilize you know our finite time and, and do as much as possible that being said you know just to see if I can make the longest sentence ever here, is you also need some point of uh, conservation. You know, you need the motorheads and ACDCs. Uh, somebody's gonna step up and, and fill those motorhead shoes now though, but somebody's gotta take care of that, the heritage too. But as it happened, we landed on that sort of, on the team that went in the boats and went out and found weird stuff. We once met on a gig in Sweden, actually. This really weird guy from Australia showed up in all white uh, and came backstage and explained the lyrics back to us. Uh, and it all was like exactly to the point. Like even thought stuff that we thought we really hidden well in there. He just told us like he could see through all the lyrics and and then he just disappeared and never saw, saw him again. <laughs> we're pretty sure he was there. We have more witnesses there as an actual person. But besides that, it's it's all very cloudy and, and wrapped in metaphors and very inspired by the way that North, Norse mythology is uh, using fables, you know, to to convey points. But yeah, if you wanna if you wanna listen to Enslaved and have it as a thing to go with, you know, doing the dishes, that's fine too. We don't we don't demand anything from from the listener in that aspect. But for us, it's. It's really tied in with our personal development and our lives, and, and uh, yeah, it's it's simply our way of expressing ourselves, you know, our inner selves. seven or eight when I got my first proper drum kit and and, um, and I, re I sort of realized very quickly that that um, playing other people's music was not my thing creating music was was definitely uh, where my motivation uh, was even though my <laughs> oldest lyrics are quite embarrassing uh, to read now uh, that you could still see that um, that the fascination for for nature and, and uh, perhaps also darkness uh, was there at a very early stage. Uh, it was always been inspiring in my early teens. My my interest to to go deeper into into the roots and and um, into the mythology and, and start studying it. Um, became more, more and more serious and I also had this vision of um, of doing some some sort of picturesque folk music thing I can remember that from a very early stage that I, I, I sort of had a dream about doing it but I uh, of course 
didn't combine these things until uh, uh, later. I would say my, my fascination for black metal was much earlier than when I started playing it uh, or I, I used to play it in my early teens. I, I played in several bands that, that uh, played extreme music. Playing in Gorgoroth was not uh, a very personal thing for me. Uh, it was art, it was uh, an expression. Um, that, I think that was my approach to, to metal at that point. Uh, so for me, Gorgoroth was not, a, was not something I, I related to on a very personal level. My brother quickly started dabbling with, uh, with, with the idea of, of doing something like Barstuna. At that point, there were nobody who, who were um, approaching these old, uh, fantastic treasures uh, on their own premises. It was more like, yeah, we use some lyrics here that are inspired by, uh, or yeah, some elements here or there, or, or in the visual concept of something. Um, but nobody digging in with both hands and, and interpreting on their own premises using relevant sounds, relevant instruments relevant language and I really wanted to do it. Um, I could hear it, I could see it and, and uh, I think that there are many, many more than me who, who shared that wish. I chose to push the reset button and, and uh, quit everything else and just focus on building this thing I had going in inside of me uh, that I could hear and I could see and in a sense it was like starting all over again which was um, very good but also very scary and also it demanded a lot of patience from those around me. Uh, what Runa is, is very um, takes a lot of time and, and um, and at that point, everything was in, in, in my head and uh, I could see it, I could feel it, I could envision how I wanted it to be, but, um, but uh, I also knew that it would take a lot of time. Uh, and, uh, so, but luckily I have uh, good people around me. Christian, I knew of course who he was before I, I got to know him personally. We instantly uh, found a very good tone and, and uh, became good friends. He has the same passion and, and uh, fascination for, for this and also knowledge. When the idea to do this um, sort of grew, it was very natural to involve him in that process. We meet on many, uh, many layers. It's, uh, there's more than just one thread that are, are tying us together. It was a big part of helping me to shape what it was I, I wanted to do as an artistic consultant on, on some things. The first time I ever heard Lindy sing, I was 100% sure of that and decided uh, on, the, on, on the fact that she had to be part of it. I was extremely shy as a kid, but I always listened to a lot of music every day. My older cousin actually forced me to sing once and he uh, said you're going to sing and I was because I almost didn't talk right? it was difficult for me to talk with people and I'm so happy that he didn't uh, give up on that because when I started to sing I could feel this freedom
the first recording we did, that was the song Bjarkan. Just by thinking on it, <laughs> on it my, my, uh, my, I get goosebumps. I, I had sort of made a couple of songs um, and uh, some of them were really on a demo and she instantly, um, she, she was like, yes, I want to do this. When I first heard it, it was very different from what I uh, usually does and that was something that I really, oh, I haven't heard this one and it was exciting for me. I've heard this Bjarkan song and he was just saying, okay, can you uh, just imagine that you are some kind of um, in the woods. And so I was okay, I can do that. And I listened to, to what he had made and sort of just got, in, got into what is called atmosphere. And I just sang. So it was uh, actually done uh, very spontaneous, spontaneously and one take kind of thing. Click. It, it was perfect. The creative concept on how I approach a rune is that far from being a phonetic sound and a graphical symbol, there is also a, a poetry to the runes that relate them to a symbolic value. I try to, to interpret these things, uh, the, each rune on, on its own premises. That means I use relevant sounds, I record in relevant uh, places, indoor or outdoor, uh, even specific dates or, or seasons. So for instance, if I'm working on, on the rune for the birch tree, um, for instance, Bjarkan, then I play on birch trees in the forest uh, and use the sound of the leaves and bark or, uh, and uh, implement that in the music and use fire and ice, stones, water standing in the middle of a river, singing all the vocals. It's very time consuming, one could say. It takes a lot of planning. These things are very fragile and unpredictable as well. It has to take the time it takes to, to create it. So I, I spent seven years creating the first album. I spent four years creating the, the second album. And um, yeah, we'll see. I think we have a lot to learn from, from the past. Um, but for me, Wadruna is not about, not about reenactment or, or romanticizing about the past. Um, because I don't have a romantic relationship to it at all. There are some things that are worth remembering, rediscovering. And I think that is something I want to do with Wadruna show uh, some old ideas, some old thoughts, some old tools, um, but in a new way that is re relevant to the contemporary, um, contemporary um, society or, or person. Um, that, that makes it more interesting as well, um, rather than trying to be authentic or, or at, at any cost. That I'm not... Um, uh, I'm not doing. A, I'm not working in a museum, so to speak. Eva has been a well-known figure in, in, in the metal uh, environment in, in, in Bergen and Norway. 
Yeah, I remember um, Aina from the good old days, you know, when, when he looked like uh, he's doing that uh, Peter Best photo that keeps reappearing when he's standing in a Bergen Street with his corpse paint, with his Legolas hair and everything. Um, <clears throat> didn't talk too much about, with him uh, at that time. Uh, busy times for both of us, and I guess around that <coughs> time he also, you know, left, left that part of the scene, but then I, I, I sort of registered that he had this new project. Of course, just the name, a lot of it sort of caught my attention. We had the opposite thing, where the music is really, you know, esoteric and, 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 and yeah, inward pointing in a sense. And, and that really, you know, fascinated me. Just at the right moment, we just got, both of us got asked by these guys who want to commission a piece. And by separate invitations, like if we could do, at least take, take out the time and, and meet and discuss some ideas. I've always had a great respect for, for him and, and liked him as a, as a person. I guess we both figured like, it can hurt, it would be a nice time to have a coffee together and catch up. The people working with the, the celebration of the 200 year um, anniversary of, of the Norwegian constitution sort of uh, got in touch with me and, and asked if I was interested in, in doing writing a piece together with him. I had great faith in, in it being a good, good thing to work with him, uh, creative-wise. Uh, and uh, it was interesting because when we, when we started shaping a concept that we wanted, a story we wanted to tell, and how we approached it, and putting it down on paper, uh, looking at it, it, it was very interesting to see that in many ways we're doing the same thing, even though uh, we use different tools, basically, uh, but, but when you boil it down, you're actually doing a lot of the same things. It reminds me a little bit of the working relationship and personal relationship I've had with, uh, with Grutte for 25 years. That these two guys seem to have like a f full overview and, and knowledge about all the things that I wish I knew more about myself. So I've, I've got this sort of pseudo-scientific being interested in everything and, and nothing at the, at the time, you know, totally chaotic, going from trying to, to, to understand something about, um, <clears throat> about physics and tying that in with, with, with the runes and mythology and then going to psychology and then so it, I really like sort of, an, I, <laughs> I would do very poorly as an academic and, and these guys are really good at that point. I need to be able to, to envision it before writing it um, and, um, and it took a while to, to sort of find the balance of things because it, we're both <laughs> we're both working with quite massive soundscapes so you can't just you can't just mash it together and, and uh, expect it to be a <laughs> to work um, so finding the right balance of when to give and when to take space uh, I think that was um, that was the main challenge in the beginning. Uh, but first song I worked on was the song called Skugshaw, um, and when the pieces started falling together there, then I could see how we could do this. The actual word means uh, mirror or reflection. In, in it's the old Norse word for, for it. In, in big lines, it's about ref reflecting upon ourselves through a historical per perspective as a person, um, as a people and uh, as a nation in this case uh, uh, since, since that was where it started at least this uh, being, being part of the, the anniversary celebration of the constitution criticizing it uh, in, in many ways. It's a very grateful uh, <clears throat> concept to work on, the whole idea of reflection and the mirror, of the, having so many uh, connotations and, and metaphoric representations. It fits a lot, and especially when we decided to have that uh, <clears throat> uh, the friction between the then and the now, 
that you were able to at least for me it felt like a, it opened a lot of doors to projects that they normally work with enslaved it's it's got this sort of strict timeless sort of uh, dogma almost mm. while with scoop show it, it felt more you, you could link it to specific historical um, times and you can link have modern times represented maybe not it's directly we're not singing about directly about factories and industrialization but it's it's there kind of it, it was a very broad uh, <coughs> picture to paint and uh, that was really really inspiring same goes for me in, in modern i i very often have a lot of in many ways there is a distance it's suggesting uh, rather than than uh, stating but here you could lyric wise you could work much more direct and uh, yeah, I also find that uh, it, was, it was different uh, different but, um, uh, but very good good to say it. there was some stuff that needed to be said and it was good to say it very uh, uh, direct London by North is a uh, gathering both in the literal sense of different artistic expressions. You have various music genres, you have visual art, um, with the one thing in common that they sort of spring out from Norway. But it's also a gathering in, in more, I guess, the metaphorical sense of, I guess, some ideas and thoughts. The idea itself, we like to think, is, is showcasing what we think is some of the best aspects of Norwegian culture and history. And that is the, the willingness and desire to explore, to go out and sort of uh, <clears throat> try and be an influence, but also maybe even more important, be influenced. It's a long time dream having uh, London by North actually happening in a few days. Um, I have so many thoughts about how, how it's going to be, so many ideas and wishes for what we want to do with it. So it's, uh, it's that magic moment, um, same as sort of same vibe as I guess going on stage. You come to the point of no return, and I'm sure that first thing we do when it's all over, it's going to start dreaming about where we can do next, and what we can do. What's the future for London by North? First of all, you need to keep in mind that London by North, London is the word that belongs to by North, but the brand itself is by North. So that should indicate to you that there might not only be London and a lot of other things when it comes to the event world from by North. And we also planned quite some other things and uh, have some other parts of the world coming into the binos realms. More I don't want to say right.